one. Hey, you were here again today breaking down the contract. I appreciate uh, Gary and Matt uh, joining us. Uh, of course, Matt from the contract committee and Gary from uh, his law firm. Appreciate your time you give to the uh, CCR Association. So today's topic is the timelines. Uh, looking at paragraph uh, 29, defining what a business day is. And Gary, Matt, I'll turn it over to you guys. Awesome, I appreciate it, John. So we had a contract class that was open to the CCR, CCRA membership um, a little, little while back and posted some poll questions. And as a result of those poll questions, had some, had some follow-up questions from, from some agents who were on that call and realized that we have an opportunity for some education um, in, in our membership. And so we wanted to take the time to make a little video to help further explain some things. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, we had a, a, a poll question that, that came up that uh, if a contract is ratified on May 20th, 2020 at 6 p.m., what day and time will the 10 business day due diligence period end for the buyer unless extended? And so we realized that you can see there as a result of that question, um, I believe that's 57% of the responses were incorrect. So we had more than 50% of the people who were on the call, and it was made up of all membership. It wasn't, wasn't just brand new agents, it was existing agents and seasoned agents. Um, you know, answered the answered the question incorrectly. So, realize there's an opportunity there for us to to do a video and try to you know answer some questions out there and and give some further explanation of the contract. So, um, I'm going to turn it over to Gary. I'm going to flip my screen over to the contract. Um, so, Gary, uh, how do we define business days in the in the contract? You're going to go into paragraph nine and explain. I think yeah. 10, 10 business days. Yeah, thanks so, Matt for having me and thanks again CCRA for hosting this. So as Matt said, under our contract, the CCRA contract, under paragraph 9A, it does provide you with a 10-day business day due diligence period um, that begins upon final contract acceptance. And we're going to talk about what that means because it's as defined in paragraph 29B. And of course, you know, your due diligence is to do any types of inspections that you want to do, um, examination and test. Also keep in mind, if you're also using paragraph 10A, that is the... Uh, the as is provision, but with due diligence, the same uh, time frames will apply as well. So Matt, if you'll take us down to paragraph 29 real quick, I'll show everybody what we mean by um, business day. So in our contract, there is a very specific way we define a business day. And as you can see, a business day is a 24 hour period that begins at 8 a.m. of any weekday, which means it cannot begin on a Saturday, Sunday, or a holiday. A weekday, it's a business They can only start on Monday through Friday. It may not end on Saturday, Sunday, or a federal holiday. So when you're beginning your due diligence period, ending your due diligence period, or even counting in the middle of the due diligence period, we're not counting Saturday, Sundays, or federal holidays. Now, a business day will begin in this contract under 29A at 8 a.m. of the following of the final contract acceptance, which we're going to talk about what that means. You need to understand clearly what a contract acceptance is. All right. Um, it, it begins at 8 a.m. and it ends basically at 7.59.59 the following day, as long as it's not a weekend or a holiday. That, Gary, for clarification, that starting that is contract delivery. How do you define contract delivery? We'll explain this that. is very important as well. Thanks. A great question, Matt. If I make an offer to Matt to buy his house and he likes my offer and he signs the contract, we do not have a contract. It is not ratified. It has not been accepted at this point. In order to have a valid contract, we have to have signed, sealed, and delivered. You've heard that probably your whole life. When he signs it on the back of our contract, there is an LS. That is your legal seal. That's what the LS means. So that's the sign and that's the sealing. The delivery means that Matt would have to deliver it back to me. If I make the offer to Matt, he signs it, goes to the beach for a week. I don't know that he's accepted my offer. I could rescind that offer, accept, accept another offer, and tell him, I'm sorry, I'm accepting another offer. So until Matt delivers it back to me, we don't have another offer. We don't have a, we don't have a ratified contract. Now, and that's, no, that's what you have to have, that ratified contract with a delivery in order for the days to start counting. Now, if I make an offer to Matt, Matt doesn't like my offer, he counters me and sends it back. I now like his counter and I sign it, no contract until I send it back to Matt. Once I send it back to Matt, then we have a contract. The key thing to know is on the back of the contract, if you'll slide all the way down to the acceptance paragraph down there at the bottom, once you get down to this box here, the person who, feel, keep on going, there you go, that box at the bottom, that box is to be filled out by the person who receives it back from delivery. So when I made an offer to Matt and he liked my contract and delivered it to me, that is when it's filled in, not when Matt signs it, but when I 
get it back. I send that in. I sign that and send a copy back to your, um, to your agent. Now, that paragraph says this section is not to be completed until the conditions of paragraph 29B are fulfilled. So right. 29A talks about single business days and explains what a business day is. And then 29B immediately after explains what you just explained about delivery. Right, which explains a su successful negotiation. My suggestion for new agents, read both of those paragraphs very carefully and make sure you understand that when you have the ratified contracts for delivery and make sure you understand what is a business day. Basically Monday, Wednesday, Friday does not count Saturday, Sunday holidays, can't begin or end on one. So Matt's come up with a great calendar, um, which I think just will walk you through the scenarios before we got on um, with this webinar, we came up with what five or six really, I think it was five really good examples. So Matt's gonna show you when a contract was, when he says delivered, what we're talking about here, contract's been ratified and delivered back to that final person. And then he's gonna walk you through how to count the day. So Matt, go hey, ahead. Gary, we, didn't, we didn't talk about this. Can you, but can you explain? So let's say that the contract is ratified at, or the contract is delivered at 2 p.m., but that other agent, the agent that it's delivered to doesn't sign the bottom until let's say 10 o'clock the next morning. Right. Which, which, date do you, which date works? The county starts when it's delivered. So I make an offer to Matt, he signs the contract, sends it back to me, it sits on my desk for five, six, seven, eight hours, it's when he delivered. The time that it was delivered, that's the time that goes in there. And that, Very that's important. the date that we're supposed to write on that last page, right? When it was Correct. delivered to us, not whenever we're, not whenever we're right. not when I got around to, you know, 24 hours later doing my paperwork and decided to fill it in. It's when Matt delivered it back to me. Okay. Delivery is the act. So if we look at, just as an example, this month, January 2020, um, a few months back. So if a contract was delivered at 2 p.m., so both parties signed it, it's delivered at 2 p.m. On, on January 2nd, if you count, that would mean that we start counting on the next business day at 8 a.m. So the next business day at 8 a.m. is that Friday the 3rd. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it ends at 7.59 a.m. of the 17th. Correct, because from Friday, 8 a.m. till Monday at 7.59 a.m. is one day. That four right. days is actually one day. Yeah, so you skip that whole weekend. So again, 8 a.m. on Friday, you start. So that's one, two. Well, you actually mean one from the, the three to six is one. Yes. Right. Well, well, it was delivered on Thursday the second. So Friday, Friday is Friday 8 a.m. is it's one from 8 a.m. on Friday all the way to 8 a.m. of Monday. Exactly. Two, exactly. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it ends at that 7:59 of the 7th. Yeah. So well, that's, what, that's, count, that's how Matt likes to count it. That's how I try to count it. Not to interrupt you, but I, how I count them is in my head. He does it different ways, and there's two different ways to count it. It still comes up the same result. I go, I count from the third to the sixth, one to the seventh, two to the three. Still comes up with the same exact answer. He, how I do it, then he does it. So it's exactly right. Yeah. So, okay. and that's that's like your most standard example. It's ratified in the middle of the week at a regular time of day. That's a, a pretty standard answer right there, or yep. pretty standard situation right there. So then, um, let's say we run into one where you know somebody wakes up bright and early before work and ratify or delivers a contract at seven a.m. In that situation, you're not going to the next day. So if we're looking at January 29th here, contract delivered at 7 a.m., this day is included then because you start counting at 8 a.m. of the next business day. That business day starts at 8 a.m. So 8 a.m. of the 29th. So you have one day from the 29th to the 30th. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three to the 759 of the, of the 12th. So really and truly what, what you can do with no holidays in there. If it starts at 8 a.m. If it starts at 8 a.m. on the 29th, you can go two weeks ahead a.m. on that day or 7 30, 9 a.m. on that day in, in normal situations with no holidays. So then you look at another situation where it's delivered just after 8 a.m. So 8 15. So no matter how close it is to 8 a.m. If it's after 8 a.m then you start counting the next day. So this would be a situation just like we used the example of January. You start counting on this day. So 8, 8 a.m. on this day. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, through to the 7.59 on the 25th. But remember, it doesn't end at midnight. It ends at 7.59 a.m. the next day. Yep. So, yeah, and if, if we flip back to the poll question, now that we've done this a couple times, if we flip back to the poll question, 
you'll see that really there was only two possible answers that could have even even been correct, you know, because it always ends at 759. So really answer A or answer B are the only ones, those are the only options we had. Right. Um, there really was no other option other than that. So you know, 70, no, 71 people did not even realize that it ended at 759 a.m. Correct. So you, you mean you're never going to have. I didn't even know that. Yeah, you're never going to have a 1201. You're never going to have 1159. It's always going to be 759 of, of whatever day it is. Yeah. Um, so just to, just to point that out. Um, all right. So then we go to April, um, an example on April. So let's say we, we have it on Friday. And now this on, on a Friday, anything ratified on a Friday after 8 a.m., whether it's Friday, Saturday or Sunday, all of those are going to start at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. So you ratified it on this day or the 11th or the 12th, doesn't matter. Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, that means your due diligence is starting at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 is the day that goes between 8 a.m. on Friday and 8 a.m. on Monday morning. So this is a really rare scenario where you go under contract on Friday at 11 a.m. and the due diligence doesn't end until, the, so we, we go under contract on the 10th, you know, the due diligence doesn't actually end until the 27th. So that's like a 17, days later. Yeah, 17 day due diligence, even though it's only 10 business days. And that would have been the same um, ending date, whether, like you said, Matt, whether it's anytime after 8 uh, 801 on a Friday, it's going to be that way because it doesn't matter whether it was Saturday or Sunday because the first day is going to be that Monday. So if you accept a contract anywhere between 8 a.m. Friday and 7.59 a.m. on Monday, that's how it's going to be. Yep, and those are very common scenarios in real estate. Obviously, we're doing a lot of a lot of showings and a lot of contract writing on the weekends. So, and if and that's a situation where there isn't any holidays, also. So, if there's a holiday in there, that's an extra day that pushes it out even more. Federal holidays. So it could have been 18 days in that scenario. So then we look at May. So this this example in May was our example on the poll question. So you get a contract at 6 p.m. on the 20th, and uh, 6 p.m. on the 20th. That means you're starting on the 21st counting. So 8 a.m. 21st, that's the first day one, day two, and then you skip the 25th because it's Memorial Day. So day three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the day 10 ends at 7.59 a.m. of the fifth. Interesting on that, Matt, is that if you sign a contract at on Friday the 22nd at 9 a.m., your due diligence doesn't even begin until the 26th. Right. Yeah, you got, you got basically four, four days. days. Yeah, four days until your due diligence even technically, at least the countdown technically even starts. So roll back up to April. I want to show everybody one thing as well in April. Um, if you notice what Matt said in April, is it from if you've signed a contract on the 10th and your due diligence doesn't end until the 27th, remember once the due diligence ends, the seller then has five business days to do due diligence. So even in this, you're, um, you're looking all the way in now till May before the seller's due diligence um, expires. So this due diligence period now is into 20 something days. My point being is a lot of times we'll receive a contract in this kind of situation where the agent will say, hey, don't do the title work until we finish due diligence. Well, when you're in this situation and you wanna hold off the contract until the due diligence is done, you're not gonna make closing day because this is a 17 days right now for the buyer plus five more business days, including uh, two weekend days, makes it seven more days. And then you got to negotiate. We could be into early part of May, maybe f May 5th, 6th or 7th before you're finished due diligence. So you're not closing in that situation probably now until mid to late May. I will actually get contracts on the 10th and they want to close on the 30th, but don't want you to do the title search. Remember all your lenders want your title work done within just a few days of title of application of the closing. And so this simply is not going to work. And that's why agents need to understand that holding title work like that, the title work is a lot of cases, just like doing an inspe any inspections or an appraisal. It's a risk that they take when they buy houses that your buyer may wind up, you know, if it doesn't close, have title work they have to pay for. So that's important to understand that these due diligence periods can get extremely long. I think the lesson learned is that calendar days and business days are very different. You know, some, some 10 day business, 10, some 10 business day due diligences are two weeks and that's it. Some, you know, depending on holidays and weekends and where things were signed, it's a lot longer than that. Like to yep. use Gary's example, if we're still looking at the screen, you sign a contract on the 10th, the, your 10 business days ends on the 27th. And then you'd go into May and it would end on the fourth 
of May, your, your five business days. So you sign a contract on the 10th and the whole 10, 10 day plus five day due diligence doesn't end until the fourth. So you're almost a month out now. Yeah, you're on the fifth before you even start negotiating. <laughs> yeah, you're, now you're on the fifth and sixth trying to negotiate. And you want to close on the eighth? <laughs> Yeah. So, well, no, so the negotiate, the five day negotiation was, was what the extra five days was. Right. So, I mean, the, the fifth, you're, you're done, you're ready to close now, but you're five days later. So there's definitely not enough time to do a title search and have it done before. Closing. Right. Yeah. On that situation, you're going to be, you know, late May probably closing. So anyway, all right, I think we covered all the topics. Anything else you think we need to add, Matt? I think we're good. Hopefully that, that clears some things up for people and, you know, we're always happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. So, um, and, you know, we're going to be doing more of these videos. There'll be more out to, to look at based on some other four questions and, and some other, you know, post contract class questions that we had. So we look forward to doing more videos like this for everybody. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Y'all take care.